Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Vanguard STEM. My name is Dr. Jadida Eisler, and I'm your host. And I guess for tonight, resident astrophysicist studying hyperactive, supermassive black holes called blazars. I am totally happy to talk to you about that going forward, but it's not about that tonight. Um, it, this is about Vanguard STEM and talking to the BOD, which we'll get to in just a second. I cannot wait. Like the pre-show that we just had behind the scenes lets me know that this is about to be all the way live and all the way real on this call. Super excited about it. Um, so what is Vanguard STEM? It is a monthly online Google Hangout, which you are now part of, that um, is to foster conversation between emerging and established women of color in STEM at all phases of their, their STEM career. So the idea is to continue a conversation to build community around uh, some of the things that we identify with together to challenge each other, to grow, to learn, um, to engage. So that's what Vanguard STEM is. Um, it's not, it, it, is, it is definitely for highlighting women of color in STEM and their voices, since we are sometimes left out of the conversation. Uh, but anyone can watch and anyone can learn from this conversation. So we hope that uh, you'll, be, you'll, you'll join us no matter who you are um, and participate in ways that we'll talk about in just a second. We've got a jam-packed hour. There's so much, y'all, so much. We're going to learn all of the things. Um, and, in, and before we do that, let me just give you a few points so that you know how to participate. Uh, you can definitely hit us in the Q&A box that's on the screen in this Google Hangout. Or uh, if you're watching afterwards, you can put it in the um, comments below. Also, you can follow us on the hashtag Vanguard STEM. Uh, or mention Vanguard STEM, or mention me, or any of our panelists. Well, not any of them. Not all of them are on Twitter. We don't judge. Um, <laughs> but you can participate then. Uh, <laughs> it's also, um, you can get, get on Facebook with us later. So that's how you can communicate with us. I told y'all. Uh, but before we go forward, I do want to just take one moment um, to honor one of our um, Vanguard STEM um, members who have passed. So Dr. Mercedes Richards is a, a computational astrophysicist who passed away on February 3rd of this year. Um, she was number 11 in terms of PhD recipients in uh, astronomy or physics-related fields, according to the African American Women in Physics um, website. Uh, so she is very definitely um, a part of the community that has produced me in a, in a specific sense as an astrophysicist, but also the larger context of women of color and STEM who have um, gone before us. She's a professor of astronomy and astrophysics, astrophysics at Penn State um, and is a wonderful, wonderful example. She's left behind her husband and her two children in addition to a summer program that she developed at Penn State for low-income high school students. So I just wanted to take a minute uh, to give honor to the life and contributions of Dr. Mercedes Richards. Given that it's important for us to celebrate those who are passing, it's also important for us to learn from those who are here with us now. So without further ado, I cannot, like literally cannot wait to introduce you to the BOD, y'all. Like, it's going to be bananas. So what we'll do is we'll have um, each one of the BOD introduce themselves, tell us a little bit about who they are, what they do now, their STEM background, and and then we'll get it, then we'll get it going. So let's start with Dr. Marquita Qualls. I thought we were going with the oldest first, so that would have been someone else. But I'm Marquita, Marquita Qualls, and I have a background in chemistry from Purdue University. I worked in the pharma industry for several years spanning from the bench all the way to, as people say, bench to the boardroom, but I did strategy development. After leaving the pharma industry, I ventured out, started my own consulting firm, Entropia Consulting, where I do leadership and professional development training with a focus for those with STEM backgrounds. Floor is open. Anyone who wants to introduce themselves? Well, hey, Jadida, thanks for the opportunity. My name is Alveda Williams. Um, I've got a bachelor's degree in chemistry from Norfolk State University in Virginia. PhD, yeah, whoop, whoop. <laughs> um, I've got a PhD in uh, physical materials chemistry from the University of Illinois at Anna Champaign. Um, that was back in 2002, and since that time, I have enjoyed a, I think, a near 13 or 14 year career with the Dow Chemical Company, mostly in um, Freeport, Texas, which is right outside of Houston. 
Um, I spent nine or ten years in research, had an amazing time there, and then made the quantum leap, if you will, over to human resources. Uh, in today's role, I actually lead uh, the team of HR professionals that uh, take care of Dow's largest integrated uh, manufacturing facilities, what we call Texas Operations. So having an amazing time, and uh, look forward to the discussion tonight. I'm Rakesha Thompson. I got my bachelor's degree in chemistry from Alcorn State University. I got my PhD in chemistry uh, from Purdue University. I was an analytical chemist by training um, in the area of mass spectrometry. I started off at Dow Chemical in September of 2002. So for two and a half years I was there. And then I um, left Dow and I came to Procter and Gamble and I've been there for 11 years. My 11th year anniversary was actually Sunday. So I started off in products research. I've worked across several franchises, um, Gain, Secret, Olay, and now I'm in hair care. So what I do by day now is half of my job is developing hair care products for women of African ancestry. And the other part of my job is developing hair care products for uh, Chinese consumers uh, on the Vidal Sassoon brand and also um, multi-ethnic consumers with a brand that we have at Target called Hair Food. Hi, I am uh, Dr. Maisha Gray Diggs, a San Francisco native. Um, did my undergraduate work in material science and engineering at MIT. Um, left MIT and went to Northwestern where I did my PhD work in, in material science and engineering with an emphasis on polymer chemistry, polymer physics. Um, left uh, Northwestern and moved then to Cincinnati where I was with P&G for 11 years across the baby care and beauty care businesses doing a combination of mostly product development but also some technology material and analytical work. Um, I have joined the Clorox company as of five months ago where I manage innovation for litter and charcoal, so the Kingsford brands and Fresh Step and Scoop Away Cat Litter. Um, and by night, I am the mother of a little girl um, in STEM, um, Maya. <laughs> well, hi, um, I'm uh, Daphne Hunter. I'm a um, project manager at the Lubrizol Corporation in the engine oils business. I have my uh, bachelor's, bachelor's degree in chemical engineering from Prairie View a and University and HBCU in, in the great state of Texas. I am uh, <laughs> I have my master's degree in chemical engineering from Purdue University. I graduated from Re Purdue with my master's degree in 2001. At that time I joined the Dow Chemical Company. I was uh, with Dow for seven and a half years working primarily in R&D in the plastics uh, polymers industry and then transferred over, I mean, uh, joined the Lubrizol Corporation around seven years ago here in Cleveland, Ohio. So uh, I made a transition from working in plastics and uh, polymer science over to uh, project management in the engine oils business. Hi, I'm Sabrina Collins, um, proud native of Detroit, Michigan, and I earned my undergraduate degree from Wayne State University uh, many years ago, 1994. Uh, then I attended The Ohio State University and earned my uh, PhD in inorganic chemistry uh, in uh, March of 2000. I've done a number of different things. Um, I did a uh, postdoc at Louisiana State University working with Isaiah Warner. Uh, after that, I worked as a writer and an editor uh, with AAAS in Washington, D.C. Worked as a uh, chemistry professor at uh, Claflin University at HBCU in South Carolina. And after that, I worked at University of Washington as director of a, a director of a, graduate diversity recruiting. I returned to uh, academia as a faculty member at the College of Worcester and uh, now I'm at uh, Director of Education at the Charles H. Wright Museum of African American History in Detroit, the largest African American uh, history museum in the world. And that's it. <laughs> Okay, so before we go on, I forgot. I don't know how I forgot this, but that's this is what happens when you're first. I got my undergraduate degree from Tennessee State University. There it that's is. Tennessee State University, Nashville, Tennessee. There it oh, is. The Tiger Bell, Oprah yes. Winfrey, Ed Tuttle Jones, Richard Dent, Claude Humphreys. The name goes on and on with the legends. 
Thank you so much, Marquita. It's important. I mean, I'm just saying, you talked it out. I wasn't going to judge, but I'm glad that you went back and brought it up. But I just want to point out to our audience already that the VOD really is incredible. Like, you've heard the breadth and depth of experience and um, job titles and uh, exposure and degrees that they have. So they really are just a high-powered group of, of women and we are, we are very blessed to have them. So the very first question for anyone who's seen our social media campaign is, what is the BOD and when did it form? Well, BOD stands for Board of Directors. Um, we Okay, sorry about that. Um, we formed um, as a group just kind of um, the connectivity that you heard, right? So like Marquita and Daph and I were at Purdue. I spent time with Alveda at Dow. I spent time at Dow with Daph. I spent time at Procter & Gamble with Maisha. Uh, Marquita and I are friends from uh, from home and I actually went to college with one of her cousins and so our relationship began by pockets of friendships and because when I truly know you, I know all about your family and I start talking a whole bunch about you and then to my other friends and so we all <laughs> eventually got connected on email and then we decided one day, you know what, trying to keep up with all these emails is too much and so then we started texting. And as we say, we text from our bat phones because some of us have work phones <laughs> and then we have our personal phones. And so we text from our bat phones. Those are the personal ones. And those are the conversations that nobody needs to be able to have access to. Mm -hmm. That's a fair point. That's a fair point. <laughs> I think the other thing, another connection that we have, if you all notice when we first started talking, we're chemists or chemical engineers. And so many of us were a part of a, a professional organization together, and we kind of grew up in Nova Shea for a while in some way, form, or fashion. And, um, you know, I think that's another, I think that's another tie that kept us all together was Nova Shea. And, Marquis, um, do you want to just say what Nova Shea is? For people? Nova Shea is a professional organization of black chemists and chemical engineers. It's founded in 1972 and has been going since 1972. Many of us have had what officer roles, um, committee chairs, sponsors, ships, very engaged and involved in Nova Shea as a part of our growth and professional development in our formative years. And it's probably safe to say too that our last physical face-to-face -face meeting was at a Nova Shea meeting if I remember correctly. In yeah, I think it was in Atlanta, was it? Yes. Atlanta. I was baking the twins, yes. <laughs> yes, you were. <laughs> so this is really an interesting point that you're making about how it started with friendship and then sort of evolved into something else. So that's actually, it seems like it's a really important piece of the puzzle, right? Because, I mean, you all have other friends that, that didn't end up on this call. They didn't end up in your BOD, and they're not on the bat keys, which is, what I'm, no, bat text. <laughs> which is what I'm going to call them from now on because I love your analogy. Thank you. Um, but, you know, there are other people that didn't end up on those texts. So clearly there is something special about this group. So could you talk, um, Daphne, maybe a little bit about how you, as being a part of the BOD, decided that this is the group and that some people weren't qualified, I guess, for lack of a better word. Yeah, I mean, this it wasn't necessarily that is qualified. You know, as Rakisha said, you know, we're all connected some way from either grad school or Nova Shea or uh, professional as well as uh, profession professional affiliations. So I think you know our relationships all started off somewhat professional. You know, um, either that was in grad school or you know in um, in corporate America, and then it grew into a friendship. So because we have you know common experiences and we've done things together, we've built a level of trust amongst each other. Mm -hmm. So at this point, you know, there's six of us. We trust our group. We know if we say something to that individual, it's not going to get out to somebody else. You feel free to talk about, you know, your problems and, you know, the things that are going on in your life, both professionally and personally. So mm -hmm. it starts off professional, but then you have to build the trust and have a strong friendship. Right. Definitely. Amen. <laughs> Um, so, Maisha, what, what did you feel like you, um, when did you know that you could trust 
the members of your group? Was it after months? Was it after years? Like, when did you decide, okay, I can tell my BOD anything at any time? I think when I let them in, and I'm about to let the world in, I guess, <clears throat> on my fertility struggles, um, with not being able to conceive, I think that's something very personal. And when this group of women was along on the journey with me through IVF, you know, through first understanding what was wrong and diagnosis and endometriosis, I think Alveda said, I think you need to talk to my girlfriend. And so she connected me with people that could help me really understand the endometriosis, PCOS diagnosis that a lot of black women get. Um, I think when you start to need a, a place and an outlet and you're sharing something as personal as that, that kind of personal journey, um, and that was for me 2009, and it happened when I passed out at work. Um, and, and Rakesha sent the word that I had passed out at work. They couldn't figure out why. And, and you let them in as you're learning. And so it was really a good place to, to share my most intimate thoughts on what is going on. And I think for me, that was probably when it got really safe and really real, um, when you share something that personal with a group of people. And that day she passed out was my birthday, and I was heading to the spa. So I knew we had reached a new level when I canceled my spa day. <laughs> I mean, because everybody on the BOD knew how I was looking forward to the spa day. <laughs> it is real. I understand. I understand. You know, the point that you make about, you know, all of you have alluded to this idea of, you know, having the professional sort of overlap, you know, you met in pursuit of the, the individual dreams that you had, you sort of held on to each other as you went, um, but also the fact that it did have to be followed up with the personal, right, and how, as, as you said, Maisha, that, you know, when you were able to share the, the innermost parts of yourself, then you know that these are your people. Um, but I, I just, it, it underscores for me, part of the reason why this show happens I suppose why we celebrate Women's History Month, I, you know, and, and, and do all these things that, like, it's not just about the work that you do. It's not just about the fact that you are a chemist or a, an analytical chemist or a chemical engineer or all these things. It's that you are a human being who has these interests. Um, and so I wonder, Sabrina, if you could speak a little bit more about how braiding those two things together has really informed your life as you've gone, th gone through. Um, hmm. Let me see here. This is kind of a hard question. <laughs> Anyone on the BOD can chime in if you want to help. It's totally fine. Yeah, I would. I'd like a little bit of help with this one. Go, B. We haven't heard from you. You said me? Yeah. Oh, absolutely. So I would just string together what uh, Daph and Maisha said in that, you know, this thing started with the professional connections. And, you know, you think about, you know, the fact that you could be reviewing a resume and it's easy to send it out to this group of women and say, hey, guys, what do you think? Or you could be writing a resume for that matter and say, hey, what do you think about this? Or, uh, you know, maybe Rakesha is about to go into a meeting and somebody might be about to get cut and <laughs> I don't know, make sure we talk her off the cliff a little bit. And so it sort of started with this professional thing, but easy, <laughs> easily, you know, you transition from, you know, the professional of, you know, review this resume. Hey, tell me a little bit about what you think about this email, or I had this experience at work or in the office, and it's bugging me. Uh, can you help me through it? And you easily transition from that to, you know, for me, I'm glad to be on this call today because for the last three weeks I've been uh, laid out, and these group of women have just been instrumental in helping me through that. And so it's kind of, you know, you know, as as Daph said, as Maisha said, we kind of graduated from sort of the professional connection of, you know, Novache or, you know, help me with this work thing. You know, for me, for example, I, it's easy for me to talk to this group about Dow because, you know, when I showed up at Dow in Texas, Daphne was there and, you know, she was pretty, you know, pretty popular, as we like to say. Basically, I was hating a little bit, but she was very popular and we loved Dow for all of her contributions. But we spent a lot of time at Dow together. You know, when Rakesh, when I showed up, Rakesh, um, I think it was a month earlier, um, our Dow user IDs are one number apart, and so she understands Dow. Uh, Maisha interviewed at Dow when I was on bed rest, and so there's a healthy connection there. marquita has been in enough discussions with me that she understands Dow well. So when something's going on in my world, it's uh, really easy for me to talk to them, and they understand and can provide, can provide really critical and uh, key feedback. Um, but again, it started there, and it easily transitions into I'm about to beat my child. Somebody tell me not to do it, or, you know, I don't feel so well. What do you guys think? Um, and Maisha, I didn't even remember the endometriosis thing, so thanks for reminding me. 
So Jadida, adding on to what Alveda said, it's really important about the trust because we're very direct with each other. We don't do a lot of sugarcoating. Um, sometimes we may have to tone it down with each other just initially, but I think that's one of the more, most important things about the BOD is that is your board of directors. They want you to be the best that you can be. They're not going to have you going out looking raggedy and tacky. They're always going to have you on your best. Right. And they're not always going to be nice about it. And, and a lot and of people I, can't handle that. You ask why it's these six. It's these six because, you know, we can handle the conversation. Some people wear their feelings on their sleeves, and we don't have time for them. So they wouldn't be invited to be a member. <laughs> you deal with, that, deal with that enough at work. It's like, bye, I'm not dealing with that in my personal life. On the bat phone. Not going to be bothered with that. No. I understand. They don't get a bat text. I get it. I no. totally get it. No. So that's it. That's why. So, well, and I, I just wanted to, to chime in. I just wanted to uh, chime in because I, the thing is, um, these ladies hold me accountable. I know that, for example, I, I do a lot of writing um, of uh, focus on, you know, African Americans and science, and so I uh, often will share a draft of some of my work. Uh, the most recent uh, article I, I authored, I sent to Maisha, and she was a very critical <laughs> uh, editor. But I need that, you know. They want me to to be the best that I can be. But if I need a, you know, some review on a um, a PowerPoint presentation that I'm working on or anything, I know that they're going to hold me accountable and and be honest because they want me to uh, represent my best self. Absolutely. I think what's important to me to just add is that I think why this works so well, even though we don't see each other often, it's mostly text. Sometimes it's phone when we're like, okay, somebody needs a phone call. Who going to call her because what I'm reading don't make sense. <laughs> it's because we're in a place where most of us are one of you know, we are the one. <clears throat> we're, we're still trailblazing, so we you know, trailblaze through our graduate careers, our undergraduate careers. You know, we made it, whatever that means, and we're continuing to trailblaze, and so there are not a lot of folks that look like me. You know, I am the black manager in Clorox R&D, and so when I'm feeling something that doesn't always make sense, it's like, okay, let me talk to somebody else who may be the one of or can know somebody that can help me understand and, and check the professional. So I think, you know, it works because we're still trailblazing and still trying to grow and learn, and I think that's why... We don't have to see each other every day or like this or it just works. I yeah. really appreciate you saying that because that is, for me, why having y'all on was so important. I mean, there are many threads that you've already brought up, you know, that, that point at this, you know, things like uh, context that people just, un you know, that y you understand what each other are going through either because someone else has actually been in that same spot or because there's so much context laid that you get it, um, and the evolution of the relationship. But what you just said, Maisha, is really why I think your conversation is most important, this idea of still trailblazing, right? Like, y'all ain't done. <laughs> there's so much more to do uh, for each one of you as a unit um, and for the, the people who are watching, right? That We're all trying to figure out where to go, how to get there, how to do it efficiently, um, how to continue blazing trails, not just for our individual aspirations, but for those that are coming behind us. So talking to you about your individual success, but then also about this sort of mutual push forward of a group is super important. And, and I wanted to make sure that we were discussing it in this Vanguard setting because, in fact, that's what we're trying to do with Vanguard, right, is to create a space where people can ask questions, where they feel like people understand, others understand what they, they're going through. You know, when you say you've taken organic chemistry, everyone who's taking organic chemistry is like, mm-hmm, yep. <laughs> right? Exactly. There is still a choir behind that, right? For me, when, you know, people talk about taking quantum mechanics, that is a rite of passage. And so having mm -hmm. people that can understand that um, and not have to, and it's not that people who don't understand it are, are bad. It's just that sometimes you don't have the energy to both explain what's happening and try to get help. So uh, this, your, no, your notion about still trailblazing um, is worth underlining um, just beca because it, it, it clearly has something to do with your, your mutual success to have each other. And maybe that's the question that I'd want to ask next is, you know, 
I know you can't run the second experiment, which is to not have this group, but can you see ways it, for each of you, it's open to anyone to answer. I'd love many different perspectives on it, but can you see ways in your own um, career or life? I mean, Mice, you've given us some really good examples where um, having the group has really made an impact. Um, maybe, we'll, maybe we'll start with the work context because I think um, it would be helpful to, to, the, to the viewers to hear how you navigate any work situation by coming back to the back text. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to take that one. Go with that one. So, not going so, you know, V alluded earlier, I'm, I sometimes can be the firecracker of the bunch. Um, and so my emails... <laughs> can sometimes be a bit terse. And so having worked at Dow and then having worked at PNG, I don't appreciate all the laughter in the background. Um, they've had to, you know, take a little bit of the bite and the edge off of some of my emails. And so that for me, working in the same company with them at that time was very helpful. I can even think about how Alveda and I came together. PNG had a legendary recruiting program that um, Alveda had attended, Rakesha, Sabrina, and then uh, V and I found ourselves in a situation where she was doctoral recruiting manager at Dow, and I then became the doctoral recruiting manager at PNG. And there was a lot of Dow has this program. It's about four or five years old. We got our 20-year-old program dates, the conflicts, we wanted to move the time of our conference. And for me and V, we were always very clear that one, that students of color should get as many opportunities to see corporate America as possible. And so having the relationship that I had with her, there was rumble inside PNG. And I said, we won't have a problem. I'm going to call Alveda. They were like, you're going to call Alveda? What, like Dr. Alveda? I said, yes, I'm going to call Alveda and it's going to be all right. And we worked out an arrangement on dates so that they could have their conference and students could attend their conference and our conference. And, if, and we still have that gentle women's agreement in place now between Dow and P&G on how we do this. Because at the end of the day, me and I were both very clear. It was about students of color getting exposure to industry and in industrial research careers. Whether Dow or P&G, the conferences are different. Both have something to, of value to bring to the students. So that was where we... I said, V, I need to call you. I'm calling you. We had a gentlewoman's agreement. Both sides are happy. And, and that doesn't naturally happen, right? Because we're, you know, even though, you know, Dow and P&G, actually P&G is one of Dow's largest customers, so even though we don't necessarily compete in business per se, uh, we do compete for talent, right? And so there's a natural tendency to say, hey, well, you know, you do your thing, you do mine, I'll do, a, I'll do my thing, and, and the hope is that, you know, I do a little bit better than you, uh, but I think to uh, Maisha's point, the idea was that we want to make sure, first of all, the opportunities are uh, not necessarily great. I apologize for the background. Um, the opportunities are not necessarily great, uh, but uh, we wanted to make sure that candidates of uh, color had uh, broad opportunity and exposure. You can go ahead and mute me, Jedida, for a moment. I think we can't glaze over the fact of what you just heard from Maisha and Alvita and Rakesha. Because uh, we're talking about Vanguard STEM, we're talking about the BOD, but I think it's really important to note that these women at these very large organizations, the role that they have had in recruiting and identifying top talent at these organizations at the um, graduate level. And so for me and what I do now as the consultant in leadership and development, yes, I can draw on my own experiences, but I also have a resource within the BOD that I can always go to and ask about, hey, what's going on? What, you know, what are you looking for in talent for these days um, when I'm working with students? So I'm not just saying things that I think. I have direct contacts, direct links to people in the industry, understanding what it is that they're looking for so that I can better prepare and train my students or clients. And I think that's really, really important to have somebody in your group who you can bounce those ideas off for as an entrepreneur. Absolutely, absolutely. You know, and that was that, that was the thing that I also wanted to underscore. So thank you, Marquita. That what happens when you concentrate this kind of um, intellect really is that you do gain the power to influence, right? You're influencing policy. You're influencing hiring decisions. You're influencing the way things are done, and that is crucial. It's cr 
it's crucial to changing the situation so that the next group of people have hopefully has a, a slightly easier path to, to, to walk. Uh, so, so you're right that 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 the fact that you are um, setting policy and setting procedure and setting uh, um, culture around these things is critically important. So I wonder then, given what you're saying, if you could talk to us about, you know, the person who's on the call now and is like, wow, this is awesome and amazing and y'all have done this great job and I'm very impressed, but how do I do this? Let's start to turn our conversation to how someone can develop their own personal BOD. I'll start. Uh, this is Daphne Hunter. Um, I think, you know, it goes back to, like, if you were to have attended, um, attended, like, different seminars about mentoring and about building your network, I actually, you know, right around the time that our BOD started, I attended a seminar, and they were talking about building your board of directors and having a variety of different mentors in your background. Uh, to help and support you in your, in your professional and personal growth. So when they were listen, listening, listing, you know, the criteria of different people you need to have in your, your, uh, I guess, board of directors, I thought to myself, I'm like, I already, ha I mean, I have that, you know, it, you know, it kind of naturally happened. But I think, you know, as you go through like, you know, grad school, as well as you know, starting your professional career, making sure that you have a variety of different connections. So you know, we have our BOD. But we also have, you know, mentors and others outside of the BOD, too, that help us in our professional and possibly, you know, personal growth as well. So start, um, start in grad school. I mean, I knew Rakesha and Marquita in grad school. I remember, um, although I was a chemical engineer and they were chemists, I remember going to uh, meetings over in chemistry building when someone was reviewing their, uh, their thesis or dissertation. Mm -hmm. And you know, even though I didn't know I me, mean, I'm not an organic chemist. I'm like, oh, all of this, I'm this is not my area. But I still listen in and gave my feedback. So start start early. You know, if you're an undergrad now, start building a network of both you know uh, peers as well as you know other professionals too. Yeah, so I would just echo what Daph said in that I think you know if you're interested in forming a BOD, first of all, it kind of happens naturally. And I think, you know, if you speak to some of the things that are on a men call, um, you know, look for people that are already sort of in your circle or within your sphere um, who, uh, first of all, you can trust. Mm -hmm. uh, secondly, folks that will hold you accountable. And I think one that we haven't talked about is people who will celebrate with you, right? And I think, you know, there, there's, a lot of, <laughs> there's a lot of stuff going on in this group of six people. A lot of great things have happened throughout the years. And I think, you know, every time something good happens, this is a group that will celebrate that. Um, because that's not something that always happens uh, naturally, you know. So I think that's another ad that I would put in. Yep. And I would argue, I think I'd add, you got to ask for it. <clears throat> I think we, primarily as women, go through so much stuff. We feel like we need to handle so much stuff alone. Um, and I think there's a, a vulnerability that you just have to be willing to share that you need something like this. Like, I need help. And I think sometimes for women it's hard um, to say, I need help. And so there may be some other people in your midst that are, you know, graduate students with you or young professionals or older professionals, wherever you are in your career, that just have a need for something similar. And you guys may not be talking about that while you drink your martinis. You may, you know, not get to that really that depth. Um, and it's right there within your grasp that you have a need, you just haven't expressed that you have a need for something like this, this level of accountability, this level of support, you know, et cetera. You know, and we've talked a lot about accountability. To me, it's not just being able to tell somebody when they need to clean up their stuff, but it's also a huge part of it is being able to hear and receive and change when you need to straighten up your stuff because it stinks. And so there are not a lot of people that have the maturity to be able to handle that. Right. And so you got, as you're doing your vetting of who would be on your BOD, they need to be able to handle that. And if they can't, then you don't need to be bothered with them. And the other part of this in this tweet and Facebook and Instagram and world, if I can't trust you and you put my business out there, uh-uh. And so that is the hang-up that culturally we as black women have, too. And you talked about me. I'm one of those who does not tweet. I don't have a Twitter handle. But <laughs> it's like 
<laughs> you you cannot have people just putting your stuff out there. <laughs> and, and so there's the level of trust that we've talked about. Like it's it's really important, and they're laughing. But like we have shared some things that we are taking to the grave. We are. Yeah. I think. Uh, can I add in, Jadida? One of the things you will notice is that we all have different personalities. No. No. So. Uh, <laughs> And being able to manage those different personalities, you know, Rakesha's very strong personality. Marquita, too. I think no, she's I'm more of the calm, you know. Wait, did she say calm. Marquita had a strong personality? Marquita. Marquita. Um, yes, she did. And yeah, you quiz it. <laughs> she's pretending to be quiet tonight. Not sure why. Yeah. Sorry, Dan, we interrupted you. Sorry, Dan. So, been able to handle that. I mean, I think uh, I think we tend to like always like lean towards people who are like us, you know, as far as personality. And that may not help you grow. So by having a variety of different personalities and being able to get that constructive feedback from a Rakisha or a Quizzy who asks you know, multiple questions or a Marquita I mean, or a, a Maisha, you know, you have to be able to handle that, and that helps you grow and develop more. If I had someone in my Something like you know, someone who was just like me. I may not develop as fast as um, I would have by having for I mean, someone who's different. I will say that I really appreciate that about Dab. She's very even keeled, very sensible, and I mean, she looks at things from the bigger picture and is able to just give some really solid advice. Where I may not have approached things in the way that Dab suggests, but after she gives that feedback, it's like, oh yeah, I can see how that would go across a whole lot better for a larger audience than the way that I or perhaps Rakesha would have done. I don't know why my name keeps getting dragged. Can you hear that? I mean, like, every one of them has taken an opportunity to take a shot at me. But you know what? I'm strong. And so <laughs> Even as I am emerging from my bed of affliction, having bronchitis disease, I am still not bothered. <laughs> but I, I just want to add that, uh, you know, at this point, I know that, like, if I approach the BLD with uh, a question, I pretty much have a very good idea as to how each one of them will respond. You know, so it, it's it's wonderful. So we're predictable. Talk more about that, Brina. <laughs> I know we're predictable. Okay. Yes, you're kind of predictable. Yeah. <laughs> Um, I, I'm going to just jump in here just for the safety of those involved um, and, and underscore something that you said that, that you have been, uh, in different ways all throughout, but this, this notion of communication, right? Whether it's trusted communication by protecting, protecting your conversation, whether it's knowing how to reach out and, and say what you need, you know, sort of, I guess, in, intervention kind of conversation, or if it's, you know, giving feedback, you know, also that kind of communication. I just, I hear that there's a lot of communication that is necessary to um, continue and to uh, curate the relationship that, so, so I, so it's, it's interesting to me that, that you have to have, I mean, it's not surprising, but it's really a way that clear, um, straightforward, honest communication is critically built. Yeah, and and I would say that you know I, I don't know what your question was, but I don't I don't know if I'm answering your question, but I would say that even because we communicate so much, one of the things that's golden is silence. So if somebody goes silent, all of a sudden this BOD knows that there's something going on, most likely, unless it's Daph, right? Because Daph will just you know ignore us for a little while and then she'll <laughs> pop in and say something and go away. But if somebody goes silent. That's really a form of communication in itself because it tells us that something's going on. Maybe it's a long day. Like we haven't heard from Maisha all day except for throughout this call, the bat texts are going crazy. But that means she's been pretty busy. But if you go a few days, somebody's going to call you or somebody's going to go offline and text you separately to make sure things are okay. So there's just that level of accountability that comes with lack of communication as well because we've sort of built this uh, reputation of staying in touch uh, very frequently, very often, <laughs> always. <laughs> And I think it's just the love, right? And I think people who are in our periphery know about the BOD, husbands, boyfriends, mamas, sisters, they know and that if they don't hear from you, they might get a call. So we might be like, what's going on? We need some information. And 
what's you know what, how can we help and so even the periphery around us really has come to embrace the BOD and we've even had spouses say have you talked to the BOD like when they get tired of hearing it they're like go to the BOD go, go, go to that group of women <laughs> let them deal with this so um, I think it's a love that even the people who love us you know just because through different circles have recognized the value that we bring to each other and then also to our families. We make each other better daughters, better mothers, better wives, better sisters. Um, so even our family, I think, appreciates what the BOD brings. And the BOD is an amazing group of mothers. I mean, these ladies, I have no children, but I have nieces and nephews, but that doesn't count. But for Rakesha, Daphne, and Alveda, and Maisha, I mean, it's just really amazing to see how they perform and do the things that they do and still have um, priority for their families and their children. Maisha with Absolutely. twins. Um, Delise is what, three? Three. Yeah. And then Rakesha is sending her, getting ready to be an empty nester, trying to be a college mom as well as a uh, high school. And then Albita with her two. And, and balancing their work-life balance and all the activities, but still being able to perform. I mean, I think that's really phenomenal. And hard. <laughs> mm -hmm. So hard. So hard. Yeah. <laughs> but you know, it, you know, I think it's important to honor that difficulty, right? Because it, it both reminds us, just as viewers of this BOD, that you work to make this work, right? Like it's not automatic. It doesn't happen, you know, all by itself. It's not all roses and daisies all the time. But that, like, there are sacrifices to be made, and and there is there is sometimes there's pressure to you know make sure everything fits, and sometimes everything doesn't fit. So so that's actually a really important point too. That you know it's not always going to be easy to maintain um, close relationship, but it still is necessary and it still is worth it. Yeah. Um, that's a really important point to make. Um, let me just throw out for those watching, if you have questions, um, mention me or Vanguard STEM or just you have STEM, and we'll try to get as many of them um, answered as possible. Um, Nicole, I, didn't, I hadn't seen your question until you said something, uh, but I'm glad that I asked it anyway. So um, that question has already been resolved. But if you have other questions, please feel free to share, um, share them with us. I have another question for, for you all, um, and it's sort of going, again, towards a side that is maybe not as um, positive. Uh, and it's, you know, we talked a little bit earlier, and it might have been, I think, Alvita, you might have mentioned this, this notion of you want someone to celebrate with you, right? because there are going to be lots of successes, and you want uh, people that will celebrate with you. So I'm wondering if there were ever um, individuals that you encountered along the line that you thought... She went silent. Yeah, Jedida, you went silent. If you can hear us, we can't hear you. Yeah. Well, just to go, I mean, you pretty much know what she was about to say, though, right? I mean, who have we encountered along the way that has maybe has not been as supportive to us? And how do we deal with that? How do you deal with the hateration? Go ahead, Rakesha, since you are there. <laughs> Don't call any names, please. This is <laughs> yes, right. And yeah. the young affiliations can be. Innocent and the guilty, please protect them. We will protect all of them, and I'll just speak in general terms. I mean, you, unfortunately, I think each of us has experienced it in um, in our work lives, and so that's that is too when the the bad text have um, have been so important, right? When you're you are recognized in a room full of people, and you get an award that day, and you know the look that you see on the folks' face isn't one of oh my gosh, we're so happy for her. It's more of, really? Um, mm -hmm. But, you know, when you know that you've done the work and you deserve the, the honor that you've gotten that day, uh, to have a group that comes along and then celebrates with you, that, that's very, it's very uplifting and it's also very empowering. Marquita, do you remember helping me um, when someone wanted to nominate me for an award and somebody higher up said, no, not you, like, not you, you're not the right one, and we're, we're not going to support this. And the person was like, no, it's absolutely you. You're the right candidate, and if you can help me complete the nomination, and do you remember me coming to you saying, 
okay, this feels a little weird writing it for myself. So you help me write it and talk about myself, and then we're going to turn this in to this mm -hmm. person. Um, and then ended up getting the award, and it was like, okay, well, clearly I did deserve to get this award, um, and it made sense, but, you know, th there was a hater, and I brought it back to the BOD like, okay, we got homework, and we have 36 hours to turn this around, <laughs> and it'd be polished. It'd be Emmy Award winning, but... Uh, <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, and those moments happen. <laughs> <laughs> How do you deal with, how do you, I mean, Jadad is not here, so I guess we have to just kind of keep talking, but how else do we deal with disappointments? Because they happen. Right. Mm -hmm. Say more. Somebody besides for Keisha. Okay. I'm, I'm just. Mm -hmm. Disappointment. Mm. I really hope we're still live. I mean. Anybody so, okay, it looks like everybody's pondering. Uh, I think all of us in some way, shape, or form are, uh, are very faith-based people. So that's right. the first thing that we do. I mean, and, you know, it, it's nothing for the BLD to send a text saying that we're lifting you up in prayer, and I don't care what the situation is. So, you know, that that's one thing. It's also knowing, too, that we're not going to win everything. We're not going to be successful, but... In trying something and not being successful, that's not where failure is. Failure is in failing to even attempt. When you get so scared by just the the idea that you don't even attempt to do, I mean, that's when you fail. So, you know, getting dusting yourself off and getting back up, that's what we're supposed to do. Right. So the topic is how do we deal with disappointment? You know, we've talked a lot about successes, but how do we use this group to deal with disappointment? Well, we vent. First of all, we can vent and talk about how we actually feel about the situation, I think. And then after we've done that, we are actually able to um, then take a step back and see what it is for us to learn. What could we have done better? And that's a hard question to ask yourself in the midst of disappointment. But after some time, you can take a look and see what you could have done better. And I like what you said, Rikisha, as far as, um, you know, um, failure is um, not attempting it. And then also if we do have that disappointment, you know, how to learn from that, but also use the BOD as encouragement that, yeah. you know, you tried and then to move on. You know, maybe it wasn't, you know, this wasn't the opportunity for you at this time, but don't, you know, don't let that put self-doubt or doubt in your mind as, you know, perhaps it just wasn't the right time or it wasn't the fit, you know, the right fit. And as you said, you know, maybe it wasn't in God's timing, you know, in God's plan at that time, but con to continue moving forward. Yeah. I think, I think the venting piece is just important, right? Because, you know, just have a safe place to get it off of your chest so that you right. don't vent to the wrong person and have more impact than it really, really should. I always appreciate that. Today, are you back? I am back. Thank y'all for being awesome. I mean, <laughs> I was like, now I hear you, now I don't. <laughs> you continuing on. Did y'all talk about if you ever got mad at each other? Has that question been answered already yet? No. You did? That question. <laughs> I was going to say that that was not my question. That's Nicole's question. Totally. <laughs> I'm sure wanted to know if you ever get mad at each other and what's your protocol with dealing with that. Excuse me, Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Let me help you, Nicole. Yes, we have gotten mad at each other. <laughs> you hear me? Mad. And we, we let you know we mad. And we might have to take a few days to get unmad. 